when God brings people your way, there are people. Why do you think Aaron and Hall were close to Moses and Moses opened up himself to them? Because these are men that knew all the extricacies of Moses and they still stood by him. I've told you before. Come, two of you. Come, two of you. Fidelis and John. Come and um, please leave. Hold my hands. When they held his hand up, they were close to his armpit. Whether it was smelling, that was not their focus. So long this hand is up, the people win. But as you lift up the hand of a general, you are close to his armpit. You can see all the exteriors. When you focus on the armpit, the hand goes down. You focus on the hand, you ignore the armpit. When God plants men, you see, Job thought he was pure. When the devil is on your case, you will know there is no priest without infirmity. When the devil makes you a project, you will know that that spotless garment you are wearing has a stain. Just pray that the devil doesn't remember you. Just pray that God does not discuss you. Pray that God does not bring you on the table of discussion before the devil. Then you will know there is no priest without infirmity. You will know that those that you applaud as pure and righteous, they are still humans. In the church today, it's not who sins, it's who is caught. It's not who sins, it's who is caught. You see a, a chronic sinner tearing down another. When I say sin, there are some of you looking at me now. There are steps you have taken that God is not happy with, but heaven has covered you. The fact that God covered you does not mean that you should run down somebody who, who is going through a process. You were covered. You were covered. When God, am I talking to somebody here? Faithful. You say, well done. Job stood and in all never cursed God. Never spoke foolishly. There are many of you, the Lord was talking to me this afternoon. I prepared something. I prepared something to share. I prepared the message already to share, ready to tear down. When God told me, say no, the afflictions of the righteous. I said, ah, ah. He said, because there are many of them that need to repent because of the statements they have made in their days of training. He said, I call them specially. They have made statements of doubt. That they have even gone to prophets to ask if they, they should confirm if they are truly called. Some of them are doubting their location. I taught you something in Mark chapter 5. It was a bonanza scripture. Bonanza. Somebody say bonanza. Jesus entered into a city called the city of the Gadarenes. Yes. In that city, everyone was asking. In fact, three groups of people prayed. Demons prayed. God answered their prayer. Demons. They said to Jesus, do not cast us out of this place. Cast us into swine. Jesus said, I hear your prayer. Demons, demons prayed. Jesus answered their prayer. The people in the city also prayed, go away from us, we don't want you. He said, okay. But the man who was the subject matter, I want to follow you. He said, no. He's answering prayer of everybody. So the man felt today is bonanza. Demons are having answers to their prayer. So let me ask him. He said, no. Don't follow me. It sounded like rejection. Jesus was ready to leave the city. He was not ready for the man to follow him. Because Jesus needed to leave a witness behind a representative behind. That is why you are praying, oh Lord, take me out of that location. God said, no, stay there. I need a witness. I need a representative. I need a representative. Things are not good in this place. Things are somehow, say, stay back. I've kept you in that location. We don't walk out of location because they are not productive. We walk out because God said so. Stop thinking God is not behind that location merely because it's not productive. No, sir. 25 years of waiting was not because Abraham or Sarah was barren. It was God raising up a patriarch 
whom we should learn patience from. Raising up a patriarch. If you want to be a generational voice, get ready to be embarrassed by God. God will remove every trace of ego from you. He will bring you to the end of yourself. He will bring you to a point where you have no voice as it were. Where everything about you will just reflect God. He will empty you and strip you naked. He will take the pride from you. He will take your ego from you. He will take what you call integrity from you. God will remove everything. He will take to that point where there is nothing to hold on to than just loving him. Just loving him. Just loving him. Just loving him. If you have not gotten to that point, you have not gotten to that stage in your life when there is nothing, your education has been rubbished. The dimensions of God you thought you knew have been rubbished. He picks ordinary men. Ordinary. Ordinary. Not all mighty men are called because mighty men are proud. Samson was the most ordinary. In fact, I've said this, that if you watch the movie Samson and Delilah, that movie is a deception. When you see Samson with all the chest and the biceps and triceps, that's not Samson. If Samson had muscles, the Philistines would not have wondered where his strength came from. They wondered where his strength came from because he was one lanky guy. Very lankyous. <laughs> Look, uh, looking like Lankyos. Lankyous. But the next thing is pulling gates. <laughs> what is the source of your strength? He picks the ordinary things of this world to confirm the world. I came tonight to speak to specific people who are going through shakings and trials. I've come to tell you that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord, you are coming out of it. It will not see your end, you will see his end. If you not see your end, you will see his end. If you not see your end, you will see his end. If you not see your end, you will see his end. If you not see your end, you will see his end. <laughs>